So, you want to hike the Trans-Catalina Trail? Then this video is for you. I must apologize because I meant to make this video ages ago, but alas, I've been a slacker. And today I'm finally getting back to it because I'm thinking people are going to want to start planning their, their hikes for next year. The Trans-Catalina Trail, while not very long, is so memorable and so stunning. I would highly recommend it. So anyway, I figured I would do a video on the logistics in case you are going to plan a Trans-Catalina Trail through hike for 2024 or beyond. In this video, I'm going to talk about permits, campsites, how to get to the trail, navigation, and more. So let's get into it. But before we do, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already to my channel for more hiking, backpacking, and outdoor content. I'm a huge hiker and I'm always getting out on the trail and sharing. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And by the way, if you're interested in learning more about the trans Catalina trail, I do have a vlog series from my time out there, which I will put up there wherever and in the show notes. The trans Catalina trail is a 38.5 mile trail on Santa Catalina Island off the coast of California. On the trail, you get to see both the inland and the beaches. Santa Catalina Island is known as Catalina Island for short. The trail begins in Avalon and it ends in Two Harbors. And you actually visit Two Harbors two times. You could also do the trail in reverse, but I think the more popular way is to begin in Avalon. This is a map from far out. Notice in the northwest corner, there's a loop where you start at Two Harbors and loop back around, hitting it twice. You don't technically need a permit to hike this trail, but you sort of do because your campsites actually serve as your permit. You must reserve your campsites in advance and then this acts as your permit. You are not allowed to stealth camp on the island. You can only camp at designated campgrounds. There are five campsites along the way, starting in Avalon. So this is Hermit Gulch, which is just a mile and a half from Avalon. By the way, if you're having trouble figuring out where the trail is from Avalon, which I did, just map yourself to Hermit Gulch Campground, which is you, you take roads to get there basically. And once you get there, you will see where the trail goes. So if you're a little confused, then just map yourself to Hermit Gulch. Next is Blackjack Campground. This is 10.5 miles in. And Blackjack Campground is just a forested campground up on top of a mountain. It's not super exciting, but it is a good distance from the start of the trail. Next up is a Little Harbor Campground. This is 19 miles in, and this campground is in a cove along the beach. It's super beautiful. I didn't get to stay there, but I wish that I had, and I would highly recommend that you stay there as well if you can work it out with your mileage. Super pretty, and you can actually get your gear hauled out to Little Harbor Campground, and you can also rent kayaks, which I wish I would have done as well if I would have had more time. And if I'd been able to get a campsite there, I for sure would have rented a kayak and had it delivered to me out of this campground. Next up is the Two Harbors Campground. This is 24 miles in. This one is right outside the cute little beach town of Two Harbors. It is about half a mile off the trail and it seems to all be uphill, but on the bright side, it is near the ocean. I was awoken by the sounds of seals or sea lions. I didn't have the prettiest campsite there, but there are some really beautiful campsites there. And if you stay there, you can go into the town of Two Harbors and get dinner or get snacks or get sodas while you're there. So kind of delightful. Just make sure if you are going to stay there, you look at an updated campground map as you're planning out your campsites, because I looked at one, but it was an old one. It was outdated. And so my campsite wasn't where I thought it was, and it was not in a great location. And the final campsite is Parsons Landing. It's 30.8 miles from the start of the trail. And you actually, you hike to Two Harbors and then you hike a loop around, you get to Parsons Landing, and then you loop back around to Two Harbors. So you actually visit Two Harbors twice. Parsons Landing is absolutely incredible. And so it's really hard to get campsites there. So if you're gonna wanna camp there, you're gonna wanna get on it as soon as campsites open for the year. There are only eight campsites there. They're right on the beach. 
and oh my gosh, it's amazing out there. I wish that I would have camped out there for two nights and stayed for an entire day at the beach just at Parsons Landing. But alas, I didn't plan my hike soon enough in advance, so I didn't get to stay at Parsons Landing. But if you can stay there, I cannot recommend it enough. Here's a quick look around at Parsons Landing. If you see those food boxes, those are the campsites right on the beach. All of these campsites have water available at them for you. Honestly, I think you could get away without even bringing a water filter. I still think you should bring one just for safety reasons, but I don't think I used mine a single time while I was on this trail. The only exception is Parsons Landing. There's no water available there, but if you book a campsite at Parsons Landing, you can actually pay for a locker that will include water, firewood, and a fire starter. Here's a look at those lockers. You're probably not gonna wanna lug a ton of water out with you to Parsons Landing, but it is on an exposed beach, so you will need water. So you are probably gonna need to book a locker along with the campsite if you do stay out there. So you book the, these campsites to the Catalina Island Company and campsites open for the year on January 1st at 12 a.m. Pacific time. They do charge per person for the campsites. So they're honestly pretty pricey for camping, but again, this acts as your permit as well. So it is what it is. There is a two night minimum stay at these campgrounds from Memorial Day weekend through the end of October, but they will waive this minimum if you are hiking the Trans Catalina Trail and you call them to let them know. You can also have firewood delivered at these other campsites, not just Parsons Landing, if that's something that you're interested in and willing to pay for. You can also rent camping gear on the island if you don't wanna bring your own gear. According to the Catalina Island Company, the best times to hike this trail are fall through spring. This trail is really exposed, so I can see why they don't recommend hiking it in the summer. I hiked it in April and it did get pretty warm throughout the day, so I imagine in the summer, without a ton of cover, that sun gets really hot. Something to note is that inclement weather can close the trail and roads and campgrounds on the island, so make sure that you're watching the weather before you get out there. In addition, high winds can actually close boats, so that could make it difficult for you to get there. So on that note, let's talk about how you get to the TCT. Catalina Island is off the coast of Los Angeles, so you're gonna wanna travel into LA in order to get there. I flew from Denver to LA. From there, you're gonna wanna take a ferry, which if you're going, if you're starting in Avalon, you can take a ferry from Long Beach or San Pedro via the Catalina Express, or you can take the Catalina Flyer from Newport Beach. If you're gonna start in two harbors, you can take the Catalina Express from San Pedro. So what I did is I flew into LA, I took an Uber over to Long Beach, I spent the night in Long Beach, and then I took the ferry from Long Beach to Avalon. I hiked the trail, completing it in two harbors, and then I took the ferry from two harbors to San Pedro, and then I had a friend in LA, shout out to Tia, who picked me up and I spent a day with her in LA, and then I flew back to Denver from LA. One thing that I will note is that you really need to get to the ferry early in order to make sure you make it on the ferry and you have to get there early enough to print out your ferry ticket, even if you buy in advance, which I did. You need to get there early enough to print out your ferry ticket via the front desk at the ferry terminal. They will not let you on if they haven't given you like a classic printed out ticket in order to give that ticket to them before you get on the ferry. All in all, I found the logistics of this hike to be pretty easy. You just need to do a little advanced planning. In terms of navigation, this trail is not the best sign trail I've ever seen. I've seen worse, but it's not the best either. So I would really recommend that you bring like a GPS device or have an app with you that will help you navigate. I use the Far Out app as I usually do for most of my hikes whenever it's available for that trail and it it really helped out a lot because especially when you get to junctions at roads sometimes on the trail it it can be hard to tell which direction you're supposed to go so I would recommend using 
one of those types of apps like Far Out or I know on some other trails I've heard of people using Gaia. I haven't ever used it myself personally so I can't speak to that but I'm sure there are other, there are other options out there. Other things to note about this trail is that it is quite rugged. The total elevation gain on this trail is almost 10,000 feet. So I would just go out there being in kind of decent shape at least, or it's gonna be a struggle. It's also, as I mentioned, pretty exposed. There can be a lot of sun, so I would definitely bring sun protection with you. There's a pretty decent amount of wildlife on the island, including bison that were brought over for a Western movie decades ago. Make sure you're, you know, respecting wildlife. Keep a distance from the bison if you see them. I did see them. It was pretty cool, honestly. Um, there are some mischievous foxes on the island, so make sure you're properly storing your food. There are food boxes at the campgrounds, which makes it easy to do so. You know, just be a good hiker and camper and respect the wilderness. And I would also say you don't need to bring a ton of food with you. Um, you arrive and you're, you immediately get to Avalon. So if you needed to pick up anything last minute, you could do that in Avalon. And then you hike to Two Harbors, which again, you end up in Two Harbors twice. And Two Harbors has a small store and a couple of restaurants. So you could pick up some extras there. I, my friend Dory and I actually like had, had dinner the night, the first night that we were in Two Harbors. We were spending the night at the campground and we actually had dinner at the restaurant in Two Harbors. So we ended up with a bunch of extra food that we didn't need. So, you know, for safety, you should always have extra food. But in this circumstance, like, maybe you don't need that much extra. And that's it. Those are the logistics for the Trans Catalina Trail. As I mentioned, I do have a vlog series from my time on the island. And I also have a video of several tips for hiking the Trans Catalina Trail. So check those out if you're interested. I'll put them down in the show notes. And thanks for being here. I'll talk to you next time.